By the end of this video, I'm hoping that you may have learned something new about Hypermill. Now, I'm stood with Justin to talk about a part that's been done on a Matsura MAM 7235V, which you might not actually believe. So, Justin, this part we, we have in front of us today, as well as it looking really nice, I would not have expected this to have been done on the machine it's been done on. So, how has this been programmed? Um, it's a good question. Um, seeing the, the, the part the first time today, yeah, you would think it would lend itself to potentially a mill turn machine with the B axis or something like that, but it has been done on the MAM. Um, yeah, how, how's it been programmed? I, I guess you're probably going to tack it from one or two sides. There's, there's, there's quite a few elements to it, actually. It's more complex than it looks. It's, it's a great looking part, and I think one of the things the viewers won't be able to see at home is there is different finishes along this body, but if you get the engineering fingernail, there is not a single change all the way down. That finish is perfect. Yeah. And I don't say that lightly. That is a perfect finish. There is, you cannot feel a single thing different. Because obviously that central portion, you can, you can move around in 360 degrees, but obviously where you've got the bosses, you're gonna have, if it's pre-turned even, you're going to have the bands, aren't you, where the bosses are, so you have to remove those. So they have to be done as separate, as separate areas, separate cycles. Now, I think it's great, and I think this part really does prove that you don't need a certain machine to do a certain part if you've got the right software behind you. Yeah. So how would someone program this from start to finish? If I gave you a blank bit of material and said, there you go, I need that, how would you program it? Sure, well there's a hole in one end, so that would be probably an open end somewhere. So I've potentially got something I can hold on. I would try and make it out of a round bar, if I can. Round bar's probably more available anyway. Um, and then it's just, I'm probably gonna rough it, sort of halfway or just past halfway, probably spin it 180 and do the other side. That's gonna get me close to near net shape. Um, it might be that uh, you almost wanna come in and turn or pre-turn out the end and maybe the center section but then you are going to be left with these, like I say, these sort of circular cha channels where the bosses are. So there, yeah, you're just into working it down, working it down really. And, and like you said, you, even though these different tool paths being used, because obviously you'll probably be spinning that at 360 degrees to get the end and the middle, but you can't do that because the boss is in the way. The finish is still, you, you can essentially tell where it's been spinning at high feed and then slowed down to get over the boss. Yeah. But the finish is still immaculate. It's partly, I think, down to the surface extension again. So once you've localized the area you want to work on, the surfaces that we actually calculate the toolpath to are extended beyond. So when you're in dif different areas, you have this natural overlap. So you you're not left with a, with a cusp or a high spot, for example. Yeah, because that's something we were talking about before this, where normally when you program two separate sections together, they never really blend perfectly. Yeah you always end up with a little burr or a little cusp in between. But there's nothing, absolutely nothing on that part. No, it could potentially be as well that even to machine that, that, that boss feature that the head's been over at an angle as well. It may well have been, been machined normal to that face. Let's say I've been using CAM for a while. How quick would it take me to go from my current CAM system to Hypermill uh, on an average? Okay, so you've got to put the hours in, you, you, you really do. So, so we start you with a three day course. After that first initial three days, you should be able to cut parts. And obviously the more you use it, the quicker you'll pick it up. The, the, the challenge, if anything, is we're going to show you everything and it's got a lot of options. But very quickly, you realize you don't need all those options. So you whittle it down to your, I always think you have like a favorite six toolpaths that do most of your jobs. I can agree with that. <laughs> so so you, you'll probably find your favorite six quite quickly and you just, you just hone in them. But the, the way that we use our support helpline, you know, we, we do kind of say it's like a, it's a further training aid. We don't expect you to know everything. You know, uh, uh, there, there, there's more than one way to approach things sometimes. So use a support line and they might show you a new way. Well, I think we, we've said this before in a previous video where you could give that part to five different people who use Hypermill and each person will do it a different way, but still come out with a great result. Exactly. Now, just before we finish this, there's, there's one, one little thing on this part I think we need to show, and that is the finish in the bore. 
because it, it's reflective <laughs> exactly <laughs> a bore that must be what 60 mil deep and the end of the the end of the pocket is reflective yeah so that just shows how smooth that finishes that finish is so thank you for watching and i really hope you learned something new about hypermill but if there's anything else you would like to know or even different topics then leave a comment down below but also don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe